Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for this session on ActiveDR for File. I'm Jonathan, I'm a Senior Product Manager here at Pure Storage for File Services. And I'm Vin, I'm Senior Product Manager for Data Protection at Pure Storage. Pure is a very customer-driven organization, and the story of ActiveDR is quite unique. This happens when my team was working with a financial client in New Jersey. And as usual at practice, we were discussing with them some data protection uh, solutions that they could use for their enterprise. We discussed with them that snapshot-based asynchronous solution. We also discussed with them the high availability active cluster solution. But the client turned around and told my team, guys, we have learned a lot from Hurricane Sandy. Now my data center sit in New Jersey and Dallas. Can you give me an option that works across that distance with minimal data loss and empowers my team to confidently say they can bring back the business very simply without going through an instruction manual? My team took that back to Pure Engineering and we came back with ActiveDR. ActiveDR is a continuous replication solution that provides minimal data loss. It is a non-synchronous solution, so it does not have a right latency and can work across any distance. And we built it from ground up to make failover and failback very simple in just two commands. The first prerequisite for any replication solution is to have two flash arrays. So in this example, I have flash array one, which is let's consider our prod site, and flash array two, which is our DR site. You just need to make sure that these are connected over a replication connection. Yeah. Once we have that much, all I tell my customers is to prepare for DR, remember to do CPR. And it's an easy way to remember the setup steps. C stands for creating a pod. So in this example, we have pod one, which is on the prod side. And pods are nothing but a logical container to group and hold the objects that we want to replicate together. The second step is to put the objects in this pod. So in the block world, let's say we want to replicate volumes. So I will put or move in those volumes within that pod. Can you do this with existing data non-disruptively? And that's a good question because we can do it with existing volumes that are on your flash array non-disruptively. So you can move those into this pod at any point of time when you want. You can also create volumes directly within this pod uh, and uh, replicate those as well. Now in a DR scenario, I know we want to have more than just data. What else can you replicate? And that's true. In a real world scenario, while data is the most important thing, you can also have some other data protection policies that are associated with these volumes. So you can have snapshots, that are equally important and you have defined them here. You want them to be exactly the same on the DR side as well. And you can also have some QoS uh, limits that you have defined and associated with these volumes because they ensure the quality of service that you provide to your host and your applications. And you want them replicated too so that when an actual DR happens, you get exactly the same kind of behavior uh, for your DR host and applications. You don't worry about manually syncing those. Yes. Now, I think that's where uh, the world of file is a little bit uh, different because you have different objects. We do. So we, we follow suit pretty much to exactly how you're doing it. We do a pod. So you would you know, have, for example, pod two, and then we are able to do file systems within a pod. You, know, you have one or more. And again, just like you guys, you know, these can be moved you know, these can be existing file systems, new file systems, you can move them in non-disruptively. Now the configuration part for file is also slightly different. We are able to bring over all of our snapshots into the pod as well. And these are directory snapshots. So all those directory snapshots, if they're you know attached to any of these file systems, they would also appear inside the pod and be there. And then we have some data management tools we call policy. Policies and the the two policies that we wanted to be able to replicate is quota directory quota policies. Mm -hmm. That way, when you're controlling, you know where your data is at on your source, you can have that same experience on the other side. 
And the other one is the snapshot um, scheduling retention policies. We want to be able to replicate those as well. That's awesome. So based on either you're doing block or file, there are different kinds of objects, but essentially you're putting those objects into the parts. Exactly. It's very similar behavior. You don't have to learn anything new. It's exactly the similar behavior, right? That's awesome. So now the third step and the final step is the replica link, which means that now you want to replicate, uh, you want to set up a replica connection between this pod with a remote pod on the remote array. And in this case, let's say there is pod one and I'm creating the replica link with pod two on now the do, uh, side. I have to pre-create that pod? No, you don't. Oh. So we have designed the customer journey or the uh, or the setup journey completely source driven. So you are not hopping between your prod and DR arrays. You can do all the setup completely from your source. And you can also define that the system should create a new pod on the remote side, which becomes the container for holding the replication of all these objects, which are for block and for file uh, in their respective pods. You know, not to hop around is really nice. I know. <laughs> so once you set up your replica link, and let me do it for your files as well, we will start seeing the same objects on the replica side. And that's it. You have essentially executed three steps to set up a real DR solution for your environment uh, using these two flash arrays. So earlier you asked me why we chose ActiveDR. This is one of the main reasons. It's so simple to I know. configure. Three steps set up and you're ready to go and it's replicating. Now I don't have to do any schedules, right? You don't have to do any schedules because it's continuous. I don't have to prioritize pods. No, you don't have to prioritize pods. You don't have to do any scheduling. Once you set up this replica link, uh, the system takes care of continuously replicating the changes coming from prod, shipping them to DR. So now we can truly say that active DR has been extended to file. And you can also say that for protecting block and files, the cust if the customer wants to prepare for DR, they just need to do CPR. And they can have unified replication. Oh, yes. That's awesome. Thanks for going through that with us. Um, I think the next thing we want to talk about with, you know, here today is that we want to talk about the situation where things have gone bad and we've, 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 we're going through the disaster. How do we fell over? How do we reprotect and how do we fell back? Yes, John, that's a very good question. And disaster is always a very critical and stressful time for our customers. And we uh, wanted to make sure that we can give enough, uh, that we can empower our customers uh, to say confidently that they're ready for such an unfortunate event. So to implement a DR scenario and uh, to get ready for that, <coughs> we have to uh, talk a little bit about the statuses of the pod, which are uh, promote and demote. So when a pod is in read write access, it's in... I'll give you a mark. Thank you. <laughs> it's in a promoted state. And when a pod is accepting re uh, writes, reads only, it's in a demoted state. Okay. And the flow is happening of changes from prod to DR. Now, in case there's a disaster, essentially, let's say you lose your flash array one that's on your prod side. Now, nothing on this side is available anymore. And all you have is your flash array two. What you will need to do is go to your flash array two and change the status of this pod from demoted to promoted. And that's one single command. Once you do that, this pod, and for that matter, this pod as well, will become read write accessible. At that point of time, you will uh, connect your host here and spin up your applications. Uh, say, uh, connect to this flash array, to these interest of volumes and file systems, and start uh, your operations back on. And we can we can pre-connect host here, right? Yes, you can pre-connect host uh, uh, beforehand as well. So you can have kind of a warm DR in that sense. Yes, a cozy warm DR. Cozy warm DR. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so now we have failed over. The second scenario would be that you have your prod coming back online, maybe after a day or maybe after a week. At that point of time, you would have uh, uh, gotten all the changes for during that time on your DR side. So you need to bring back your prod to that uh, consistency level. 
what you need to do the uh, what do you need to do for that is once the prod uh, prod fa1 comes back online and i'll give that back to you yeah when that com uh, comes back online you can change the status of this part from promoted because it was in promoted state into demoted state and once you have the setup uh, from promoted and demoted uh, between these the flow of data changes okay. so at this point of time this will become uh, kind of your primary to, so as to speak to start shipping changes from here to here and that way you are getting two things one you are able to bring back your prod to the same uh, data consistency level that uh, it lost during uh, the time it was down sure. and also you are now reprotecting your dr side because during the time if your dr is operational and something goes wrong uh, you didn't have anything again to fail back on so now you have a reprotection of your dr side too so that's where uh, the reprotection comes in i think the final and the most ideal state is that it has been some time since the dr happened and the customer operations are coming back to a more uh, natural and ideal state and they're ready to now turn back on their prod as a real prod uh, with all the applications. Let's assume that by that time, with this flow, both the uh, pods are at the same uh, uh, level of data because of uh, replication. Then what you need to do is go to the prod, change this from demoted to promoted, okay. and change your DR pod from promoted to demoted. And that way, just the two commands and you're flipped the direction of replication again. And now this is your, again, the prod primary, and this has become your DR secondary. And the flow of information, again, starts happening from your prod to your DR. Yeah, I think this is actually one of the parts I liked is that you don't have to manage this replication connection. And that's what we wanted from our customers as well, is that they don't have to worry about like trying to figure out which direction the thing, all they have to worry about is where they want to have production at. Uh, you know, and what they want to do at that time. So I think it's really important that we did that automatically for them. That's true. And this kind of makes it very easy and gives the confidence to the storage administrator that they'll be able to face the stress and the challenge during a disaster recovery. I love this whole thing about the DR. Um, one of my favorite parts and one of the things I loved about when we chose this for file is the ability to do DR testing. You know, um, I used to be a sysadmin and previous life <laughs> and uh, DR testing was always one of those things where you're, you're always stressed out, you're always having to put everything on the tar DR, you're always worried about losing RPO, losing redundancy, all this stuff. And, and, and if you look at Murphy's Law, the worst time to have something happen is when you're sitting over in the DR in the middle of the test and it's the worst time and that's usually when the stuff actually happens. So how do we, how do we fix that? And that's a good question. Um, and that question came to us uh, while we were building Active DR as well. Okay. Because there are actually financial institutions that have to comply with certain regulations to do this kind of act, uh, this kind of disaster recovery testing at least once in a year. And they can span to a day or a week, uh, very stressful, cumbersome, and risky uh, during the testing phase. So what we have done is we have built in a workflow which accommodates that scenario. And what that would look like is, let's say this is your scenario of your ideal state. You have prod DR, data replicating from your prod to DR. Uh, this part is in promote state, this part is in remote state. All you need to do is go to your DR and change the state of this uh, part from demoted to promoted. Okay. Now at this point of time, because promoted means read write, this part becomes read write ready. And now you can spin up your apps on the host on the DR side. Uh, start uh, doing your reads and writes uh, and start testing your DR. The cool does, that, thing, does that stop replication? Exactly, it doesn't. The cool thing about this is <clears throat> at this point of time, while you're rewriting from your uh, DR site apps, your changes from prod are still being shipped and the pod is taken care of just hiding them, putting them behind the scenes, not surfacing them to you because it doesn't know what's the intent right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it just assumes that you are doing some testing. Once the testing is complete, uh, what you would do is change the status from uh, promoted again to demoted. And what that tells to the, uh, to the pod is, discard all the changes that came from this side and reconcile everything, all the changes that were shipped from the prod side. And you go back to a normal replication state coming from prod to DR without losing 
any changes that were shipped during the DR testing. Did you lose any RPO? No. Did you disrupt anything on your production side? I didn't. And I know that's why it's your favorite. That's my <laughs> favorite. Yeah, I love having the fact that you don't have to suffer a loss in redundancy or suffer a loss in RPO just to test your DR site now. Yes. I mean, that's that's got to give a lot of people back their weekends, <laughs> you know. And peace of mind. Peace of mind as well. All right, so this is the ideal star use case of disaster recovery. Why don't you tell me that in file, there are some more use cases. Yeah, there is actually some other ones. One of those that I like to mention is content distribution. So obviously DR is a great use case, but in the file world, sometimes you have, you have, you have people in very distant places that need to access the same files. The issue that comes up there is that they have to cross WANs and VPNs and hit latency to access those files. And that may be software that's essential to their job. Maybe it's an ISO they need to be able to install. And so with, with this solution of continuous replic replication that's adaptive across distances, we can actually supply a secondary site with a read-only copy of those ISO, of those software images, and they can access that or any other you know um, content they need to access over a distance. And if they're updating it over here, let's say they come over here and they say, we need V1.2 available now. Oh, well, now that's gonna be over here, you know, 1.2. And so, it's easier for these people to not see those long latencies, wasting time waiting for something to download when they can have a local source, read-only source of that data. All right, so now I'm gonna ask you the million dollar questions that's super important for us and for our viewers. How much does it cost to implement ActiveDR for our clients? Well, because everything that you, every feature that we produce for Flash, Flash Array is free, it's free. It's completely free? Yeah, it's included with the Purity software. Uh, as you upgrade your code to a version of code that supports ActiveDR and ActiveDR for file, you can utilize it with no extra charge. No new hardware, no licensing, it's all there included. They say the best things in life are free and so is ActiveDR. And it's unified. And it's unified. Eiffel Tower. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs>